everybody doing? Everybody's quiet. Go Steelers. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and, and welcome. My name's Pete Fearley with the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I think as uh, most of you have heard the news is that uh, Steelers legendary coach, Hall of Famer Chuck Knoll passed away last night. And I think it's only appropriate that today as we celebrate Steelers Day that we just take a moment of silence before we start. All right, thank you. Let's meet our guests here today. Safety Will Allen was a member of the 2002 National Champion, the Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> he was an All-American as a senior before being drafted in the fourth round of the 2004 NFL Draft by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's played with the Bucs from 2004 to 2009 before signing with the Steelers in 2010. After three years in Pittsburgh, he moved on to Dallas, only to, after five games, to come back to Pittsburgh. A veteran of 147 games, he's recorded six interceptions, 293 tackles, and forced five fumbles. Welcome, Will Allen. <laughs> Kicker Sean Sweezum played at Bowling Green State University, where he became the Falcons' all-time leading scorer. Sean joined the NFL originally as a free agent in 2005 with Pittsburgh. He's seen action with the Dallas Cowboys, the Washington Redskins, and for the past four seasons, the Pittsburgh Steelers. In all, Sean has played 112 games over nine NFL seasons. He's connected on 182 field goals, 229 extra points. Welcome, Sean Sweezum. So guys, the, the, we're celebrating the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are, without a doubt, one of the most storied franchises in the history of the National Football League. How much are you aware of that history, being a member of the team today? Um, I'm very aware of it. You know, uh, as soon as you walk in it's, um, to the facility, it's a very historic place. You know, you see all the trophies. You know, you see all the pictures of all, you know, all the great players. And, uh, and then growing up in Ohio, you know, you always heard about uh, the Browns, the Bengals, and the Steelers. You know, those are the teams that you always hear about and you, you know, grow up watching those guys play and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great tradition to be a part of. How about you, Sean? Yeah, sure. So anytime you have the opportunity to play in the NFL, it's special, regardless of the team you're with. Um, when you walk into a place like Pittsburgh that does have the rich history, um, it's a special place. It's a, it's a place where you can come in, prepare to win a football game. You don't have to worry about a lot of the other stuff that comes along with some of the other organizations that <laughs> <laughs> we may or may not have been a part of, uh, but, it's, uh, <laughs> but it's special. It's a uh, really, really good place to be. I'm real happy. Yeah. Now, you guys may or may not be aware of it, but you represent two of the very important ideals of what the Hall of Fame is. And our mission, two important parts of our mission statement are to honor the heroes of the game and to celebrate excellence everywhere. And I want to put a little into perspective is since the NFL was founded here in Canton in 1920, there's been only 24,000 men who have made a regular season roster. Hmm. Put it into today's terms, of all the high school seniors playing football, only 0.2%, that's 0.2 of 1% make it to the NFL. Hmm. At what point did you guys realize that your dream of making it to the NFL might become a reality? How old were you when you thought, hey, this could happen? For me, it was, it was much different. I grew up in Canada. Um, I didn't grow up watching the game of football. We have the CFL. So I, grew up, I, I played in Canada in high school. We'd play Friday afternoons. Um, no fanfare. It was just for, for the love of the game came to school in the U.S., had no idea what I was getting into, and really didn't follow the NFL until I was actually playing in it. So in the past nine, ten years, I've learned so much. When I first started playing football, when I was with the Cowboys, I, I didn't know the difference between the AFC and the NFC. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know the significance of really anything. I would go to functions and meet Hall of Famers. I had no idea who they were. Um, <laughs> You know, so in the, <laughs> it was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so in the past 10 years, um, certainly from my experience playing in this game and being involved, um, I've come to really love and respect this game much more than just actually playing it, uh, but for the history of it. It's, uh, it's very special to be a part of it. 
Well, you probably had a little different story growing up out in, in Dayton. Were you, first of all, were you Steelers, Bengals, Browns fan as a kid? Unfortunately, I was a Bengals fan. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up uh, watching Boomer Esiason, Icky Woods, uh, Carl Pickens, and, you know, all those guys down there, you know, in, in who they country, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> I, was, I was sold, and, uh, but now I turned over a new leaf. <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, my story is much different from, um, from Sean's. Like, I guess I thought about the NFL um, kind of, it always, was always in the back of my brain. You know, it was always a, a, like, always a plan C for me. You know, you grow up enjoying the NFL, enjoying watching. But I, honestly, I thought the NFL was a little boring back then. Mm -hmm. You know, but, I, you know, you knew the history of it. You knew all the great players. You know, I love watching Barry Sanders play, uh, Deion Sanders, and uh, all those great players like that, and Bo Jackson. Um, those are players I looked up to, but my whole goal was to go to college, you know, get a scholarship to play football and get my education paid for. And that was just my mindset all, all growing up. I knew growing up that's what I wanted to do. And then once I got to college and I started, things started materializing and coming to fruition, I was like, I got a real shot at this. I got a legitimate shot of playing in the NFL. And, I really didn't know what it meant either. Like Sean said, when you first enter the league, you don't know what it means uh, to be a part of that small percentage or that highest percentage. And I, and I, I didn't. I was so naive. I'm just like, well, I'm here. What do I do? And then mm -hmm. probably year five or six, that's when I started realizing um, just the, the high quality of professionalism and uh, the men that are selected to play and those that stick that long. You know, I kind of just going along each year. But now it means so much more to me. You know, I'm going into year 11. Sean's going to year 10. And, you know, we, we really understand and, um, and relish the moments that we've had and, uh, and, and so many before us that they, that they fought and, uh, you know, and um, set the tradition before us. Can you take us back to the first time you stepped onto an NFL field as a pro player? Do you remember the moment? And, and did, you have a, did you even have a, a moment to reflect and say, wow, this is really cool, or describe the moment? Do you remember it well? Uh, my first moment, ironically, was against the Bengals. <laughs> uh, it was the first preseason game in Tampa, and I just remember, I just remember uh, saying, "This is it! Like I'm here! Like this is it!" You know, and I'm I'm watching Derek Brooks, who's a Hall of Famer now, and you know he played with Warren Sapp, who's a Hall of Famer, and uh, I got Rondé Barber, who's going to be a potential Hall of Famer, and I got all these guys around me who are going to be potential Hall of Famers. I'm just sitting here like. You know what's going on, like you know, <laughs> and, it, you know, and, and the thing is, the, the, the crazy thing is, I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out. And Mike Thomas is my secondary coach wow. at the time, so it's like full circle, you mm -hmm. know. So, um, you know, he's trying to groom me to be this player, and I don't even know what's going on. I'm like, just do what I know best. That's play football. So I just went out there and didn't get into the fourth quarter, and was like, <laughs> here we go. Let's let's make something happen, and I end up making some plays and. You know, I, I was nervous, you know, being on that big big stage and um, seeing those guys who put in all those years of work and mm -hmm. trying to live up to them, try to make them proud of me. That was my whole thing. I want to make the guys I play with proud of me. Mm -hmm. That was the thing I thought about when I got on the field. Sean, take us back to 2005, first time you step on to NFL field as a sure, professional Sure, so player. I came to Pittsburgh in 2005. Um, so. At that point, I would just play in the second half, so that wasn't that moment wasn't as vivid to me in the preseason. But I started the year with the Cowboys. Um, so you come into the locker room, you got your jersey hanging up, and you're thinking like, "This is actually going to happen. This is real." <laughs> um, pretty special moment coming out into the tunnel before the game. Certainly, a lot of nerves, excitement. Uh, Bill Parcells was the coach at the time. Um, you know, he came up to me probably had a general idea of what I was feeling. He said, it's just football, son, you know, and, and, and that moment for me really has resonated with me over the years because that, it still holds true to this day. Um, that was uh, Tony Romo was my holder, um, and she's like, I go on the field maybe 10 times in a game, so as a young kid, as a kicker, um, it's a very, it, now it is the norm, but at the time it's, um, it's very challenging to be able to control your nerves when you're only on the field maybe 10 plays in a total game. Um, that's something where 
the older I've gotten, the easier the game has become mentally. And now with Will and I on the, I hate to say the back end of our <laughs> career, but uh, <laughs> uh, just marrying, you know, the, the mental capability we have now with keeping our body healthy, um, as long as we can do that, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun right now. Well, you had a multi-pick game in your second season, in the f two picks in the fourth quarter of Brett Favre. Mm -hmm. Where does that rank among all your all-time highlights? Uh, it's a special one. Um, but, you know, it, you said all-time highlights. My favorite highlight would be interception against Michigan to go to the national championship game. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's that, that's <laughs> You just playing to the crowd now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's, that's the one I really uh -huh. But in the NFL, that's probably the highlight, you know. Mm -hmm. Picking off Brett Favre, Hall of Famer, you know, it's um, you can't get you can't get any better than that to win the game, help your team win, and you know, again, I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. I really don't understand how big that moment was. A lot of people talk about it still to this day. I remember you getting those two interceptions against Brett Favre. I'm like, I was like 23 years old or mm -hmm. something, and 22, and I'm just like, it's just football, like you know. But it's a big moment, you know. And but now it's it, it was exciting. It really was. It really was exciting, and. Uh, you know, again, I can tell my kids about that. I still got the footballs, and I can show them and uh -huh. live that moment, you know, 20 years from now. So, Sean, being a kicker in the NFL can be have, have its ups and downs. You've had a uh, bounce around a little bit with the league. You've been, you've been with the Steelers now for four years, going into your fifth season. How difficult is it to kick in Heinz Field? Uh, it certainly presents some challenges, um, not unlike what it would be like in, in Green Bay, Chicago. Um, Cleveland and it's uh, I've learned to embrace it uh, it's fun watching guys come in from from domes or southern places <laughs> and they come in and we're out in pregame and the ball will barely stay up in your, your holder and it's freezing cold and um, it's I've learned just to, to relish it and, uh, and and just roll with it because it certainly does make make my job much more difficult now, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you some of the conversation of this offseason has focused on the elimination or changing the rules on the extra point. What is your thought on the extra point in the NFL? Well, as long as they keep one thing for me to do and I keep a job. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be ideal. Um, but in regards to changing the extra point, um, you know, obviously change sometimes is sometimes it's difficult and it's uncomfortable especially for me it would make my job more difficult um, my proposal would be to keep the integrity of the the game the same would be to say you score on the right side of the field outside say uh, a high school hash you kick you snap the ball from say a high school hash increase your angle which makes the kick more difficult it narrows the, the uprights uh, but still gives the team the option to to go for two. What's your thought as I an think, I think I think that makes sense. And he, you know, he's a professional. He's been doing it his whole life. Uh, you know, I don't know nothing about kicking. You know, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I mean, but you know, it is the angles are difficult. You know, what he's saying will make it harder um, and more challenging. And 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 people understand that extra point is is a huge momentum swing in the game. You know, people you don't understand like the. The differential in points throughout the years and through crucial moments in the game, how that's how important that is. Um, just that one point. So I think to make to increase the difficulty of the kick, as Sean was as Sean was saying, would be a great implementation of the of the uh, extra point. I, back to that, you know, backing backing the kick up. I think the the potential issue there is that the threat of a fake is virtually gone, um, which allows guys to come. Off, off the edges and it, it changes the structure of the play. Um, for that reason, I, th I think yeah. that's a little bit difficult. I mean, it, it, it's a, I think it's an element of the game that, that, that needs to stay. You know, it's a, it's a tradition, it's, it's a part of the history, it's a reason why the rule was implemented in the beginning, why you only allow six points for a touchdown. Um, extra point gives you seven. It's some math behind it, some science behind it, and I think uh, it's a good rule. At, at this point, guys are so skilled at every position on the field. Um, so an extra point, there's a lot of moving parts there that a lot of, a lot of people don't understand the complexity of that play. 1.25 seconds is the total length of the play. Guys like Will coming off the edge, guys through the gap. If, if one guy is a little bit off in his technique, 
or the kicker mishits the ball, um, it will be blocked. It's just a guys are doing a really, really good job of it right now of a, of a really a complicated skill and they're just making it look easy. Now you've both been to the Hall of Fame. You played in the Hall of Fame game last year. You played a, a few years ago with the Redskins. And uh, as an active player, what does it mean to you when you walk into the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Well, to me, you know, everybody thinks like football's like uh, made in the South, you know, and I'm from Ohio. So to have the Hall of Fame in Ohio, uh, and to come, be able to you know, take a drive up from, you know, Columbus or Dayton and see the history of football, where it all began, where it all started, you know, you know just guys playing on club teams, you know, making money here and there and de it developing to what it is today, it's, it's amazing, you know, it really is. And to see all the great players that has uh, contributed to this game and the great people, you know, it's, it's a mi millions of people that have contributed to the, to the game and the, the game that we play and it just trickles down all the way to peewee football. So it's, it's exciting. Um, I love history, you know, so to learn more, to get more knowledge and to see where, we, where we've come from in a, in a sport of football to where we are today is, uh, is tremendous. How about you, Sean? Well, certainly, um, Pro Football Hall of Fame has done a wonderful job preserving um, the history of this game. And I think um, certainly the popularity of this game is hopefully will continue to grow. I think it's important for us all to, to remember where this game came from, um, myself included. So it's, uh, this has been a wonderful experience for me um, in the past when I've been here. Like I said, when I didn't know nearly as much <laughs> as I should have, um, just a great way for me to, to kind of take, take in the history of this game. A big part of the Hall of Fame's mission is also to promote the values of the game. What one lesson will each of you take from your careers and apply to the rest of your life? Uh, mine would be humility. You know, uh, with great humility, there's you know you have to have a lot of responsibility with it. And we'll resp you know, and um, you know that's that's one thing I've learned. This this game will humble you. You know, you could be on top of the world one week and the next week give up the great the, the big touchdown to win the game, and you know you can be hurt the next week and for a whole year and then come back and have a you know you know Pro Bowl year. You know all these different all these different levels of adversity that you will face through football, learn how to manage that, learn how to be a good teammate, learn how to put your pride down and your selfishness, selfishness away for the betterment of the team. Uh, uh, it helps you uh, grow as a man, it helps you grow as a person, and it helps you to carry that on throughout your community and people that you love and care about uh, if, you know how to, if you know how to do it. Uh, so humility is the biggest thing. Um, you know, you know I, I don't think Sean or I have has the most glamorous careers but, you know, he's in 10, I'm going on 11, you know, so um, football's taught me a lot of humility. Certainly, I've experienced a lot of success and failure in this league. Um, it's helped me develop into uh, what I hope is a, you know, a good father and husband. Um, it's helped build character, certainly. I've learned from it. Um, we don't really have a choice. You're either going to succeed or fail. And if you fail too many times, you're going to be out of a job. Uh, but resilience, I suppose, is, uh, is something I'll be able to parlay into hopefully a successful life after football. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate you taking time to come out here today. We're going to, they've agreed to line up and uh, over here in a couple of minutes. And um, we'll ask everyone here if you could line up in the back. We'll come over and you can either take a, uh, a photo or get an autograph. Uh, if you want to take a photo with your own phone or camera, um, you can do that. We also have Sharpshooter, who's our professional shooter, who can take your, um, take your shot. And then uh, you can pick those up outside our store downstairs. So. I appreciate everybody being here for Steelers Day and appreciate our special guests today, Will Allen and Sean Sweezy.